This is our 14th year on this off-grid homestead. We've invested our time and money building this place, but I want to show you. I want to show you all the ways it's paying us back. And it's paying us back a lot. What are you guys looking at? Oh man. Oh, that's really happy. We planted these guys a few years ago. 15 hazelberts. Yes. From Quebec. And we haven't got a nut yet, but we, <laughs> it's been rough on them. Like we had some losses in like some hard winters and we've never given them like regular waterings. Um, I would like to put in a dripper system because you kind of get what you, you get out what you put in. We had help getting firewood this fall and we just had too much. We've got uh, tons bucked down by the house. We still got a year's worth stacked there and we've still got a big deck up here. So that's free heat in our house for well, the next two years is already in the bank. These are coming. Look at these little guys. Looking happy. Those are rhubarb candies in the making. Oh, look at that, Rose. You got stuff growing in there. The garlic is up. Wow. Look at that, hey? Yeah. Here's the main rhubarb show. That's really up. And Christina's horseradish. Four. This stuff, I think we can harvest some right now. Last year we installed a dripper system in our raspberries. And that is gonna make all the difference. One of the things that we built around here was a water system, which, man, it's just, it pays back every year, it's amazing. We put this tank up on the hill and we have two ways of filling it. The main way is the ram pump, so we're gonna go set that up right now. But the other way is if the creek is really low, which it does sometimes midsummer, uh, we can fill it with our pond. Here is the pond and it's full, busting at the seams. It's been a dry spring so far, but this thing's always topped up. If you guys are coming to the off-grid camp out, this is one of the cabins that you can stay in. It's like a little off-grid system, a little toilet and a little uh, heat on demand shower and a little wood stove. Hey. Wow. This is going to be a jungle of peppers and tomatoes and cucumbers and there's Big Murph, the biodigester methane maker. You're going to see more about him in a different video. Do you love your greenhouse? I do. Yeah? Yes. I miss it. It looks yeah. very not ready right now, but it's oh. going to be awesome. It's like, you know, what we look like when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> a little disheveled. <laughs> the greenhouse we built, I don't know, it's been four or five. Will this be the fifth year in here probably? It has been amazing. What did you get that one year in tomatoes? Like 200 pounds of tomatoes. 200 pounds of tomatoes. But also like way too many cucumbers to make pickles for the year. And sweet peppers and jalapeno peppers. And we put in a little gravity feed water system you don't even need to sit here and water it for hours every day just turn it on and yeah. come back in half an so hour so it's an investment hour. yeah and it pays back for us it's not even just the dollar value of that fruit and vegetables it's like you can't get fresh fruits and vegetables like that here to be able to walk out to your garden and just like eat a cherry tomato is is kind of invaluable. The root cellar. We're gonna come back to that. These pastures look beautiful, girls. Wow. These 
pastures were the thickest bush when we got here, just like this. Just solid. Like you could hardly walk through it. Fencing, clearing trees, picking up sticks, burn piles. But now we have pastures. So now we can have our milk cow in there. I'm gonna get some baby goats here soon. There it is, the beaver ponds. And the ram pump. Well, that's handy that we put that little union there, hey? Uh -huh. Did we do that or did it come like that? Not sure. This one holds us off. Okay, Julia, you can start filling it. Close this one and open this one to prime it. That's right, yeah, just to fill the and pipe. Then once it's full, then I close this one and open that one. That's right. Man, there's a lot of water in this beaver pond. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen this ram pump video, like go back and check it out. The ram pump's amazing. Uh, we got it from Seth at Landa House. You can see his YouTube channel. It's so simple. It just works awesome. But every fall we pull it out so it doesn't freeze. And each spring we put it back. And it just, it takes this little, like I just walked the whole pipeline. It's only like a hundred feet. It's like a hundred feet. It drops about six feet and it pumps a thousand feet up to that tank on the hill and raises it about 40 feet in the air. It's like, it's hard to believe. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go, I gotta hold that thing. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Let's do it. Okay, it'll probably take a couple hours, and then we'll go check. Should be coming in our tank on the hill. Perfect. Next up, we're just gonna put these panels in summer position so we can get max power. That's not right. No. You, you gotta to undo, undo that, that one, one too. And just yeah. lay it down. the one we take off. This one we could have left on. I think we do this every year. Yeah. The, the first one. <laughs> you should just write on it. Kind of yeah. A yellow right. arrow. Yeah. Loosen, loosen, remove. There we go. Okay, so which one do we We did it totally wrong and it still took about three minutes. Move this one. Girl's house up there. Still doing good. One hay bale left from winter time, feeding the cow and the horses. Everything is just fantastic. I love all that firewood. And look at this. Over there. You guys remember that bison hunt? Oh, there's the skull. There it is, symbol of summer right there. Nicely done, ladies. 
Those lithium ions have been awesome. And we are at 99%. It's not even fair. These batteries have no chance. So we're only pulling a thousand watts out of the solar, but that's because we're basically fully charged. So that's 3,600 watts of solar and it would be cranking right now if the battery wasn't full. We invested in a solar power system and man, our power is free. Like there's a little bit of gas for the backup Jenny. I know. We even have a battery powered chainsaw now and we use it as much as we can instead of the gas one. And so we're using solar power to make our wood power. And that's how we cook and heat everything. And like a little bit of maintenance and operation and man, it's like free energy. Like a perpetual motion machine. Ready? You wanna see it? I'm ready. It's cold in the air. It is cold. How guess, cold is it? It says four, I think. Yeah. This back one also says four. Ouch, it feels warm. colder in here though. I know. Maybe it's just a little bit damper. I think it is damper. Four degrees or 40 degrees. We've got the cheese shelf. We've got, what's in all these bins? Potatoes. Oh yeah. Oh, look at all our tiny baby potatoes. Yeah, these ones are tiny. These look pretty good, hey? Well, they look perfect. The root cellar is more important than we realized. My grandparents had a root cellar. Like I knew it was a thing. But until you start producing a couple hundred pounds of potatoes and then you're like, where do we put the potatoes? Because of course they go bad if you keep them warm and, and if they get any light, they sprout. So if you want to store a whole pile of like fresh root vegetables, you need a root cellar. That's why it's called that. Colby and it's already ready. Mm -hmm. Wow. This one's an Asiago. These are like a legit wheel of cheese. Cheddar. Are we gonna eat that all tonight? Yes. I mean, maybe not all, but. <laughs> Even this house, like we built this for not a lot of money. Like we were living in it and it was 20 grand Canadian. And it's got more now cause we've added some stuff inside. But I mean, call it 30 or 35,000. I don't even think it's gonna fall down this year. The root cellar? No, the house. Oh, the house. Yeah. No. I mean, it's gonna go for a while yet. I think we should eat that cheese on pizza tonight. Let's Deal. make pizza. Deal. This is where we're gonna hang out during the camp out. We're gonna hang out right around this campfire. We're gonna have the pizza in the outdoor kitchen here. We're also use that wood cook stove to make some amazing things. We gotta put the roof on yet. Yeah. You can come and visit with us and a bunch of other like-minded people and Tell us what your plans are. Tell us about your homestead and ask us any questions you want. And we can sit around here and talk about our plans and our dreams and, but we're also gonna do some stuff. So Julie is gonna do a leather working workshop for anyone who wants to join. Dave's gonna do a wood turning workshop with the pole lathe. We're gonna butcher a pig. We're gonna take a pig and cut it right down into the pieces that we'll eat all weekend long. The off-grid campout is a really unique um, place where you can just like meet lots of other like-minded people who probably feel the same way as you, who have lots of questions, who want to find other people who feel the same way as them. It's interesting how people share a lot of interests. They have a lot in common. Yeah. Uh, similar values, similar projects back home. Yeah. Like it's not a ton of people. It's just whoever can fit around this campfire. <laughs> There's your host, Rose. <laughs> okay, time to put the roof up. more than like three inches. Oh, it looks like you maybe cut it though. Yeah, not. You, that end's been cut. No. Yeah, you had it tied right there. You definitely cut that corner because there's a loose thing Listen, on there. Listen, I don't cut corners. You did. <laughs> there's a hanging thing there. Yeah, I can just go around here. 
Okay. Kind of crooked. It's gonna make great pizza. It's tape. <laughs> Who put her in there? Can you hear it? It's been a couple hours. It's flowing in. Huh? The whole baby. Here, Kes, turn those raspberries on. Life giving water for the raspberries. We're gonna get paid in raspberries here in a couple months. <laughs> Is there a baby in there? Hope so. I hope so too. She should give us a calf and start giving us some milk here in a month or two. The milk and the cheese and the butter and the yogurt and the cream from one little milk cow has really blown me away. Yeah, look at the nice green grass in here, boys. Let's see if we can get some water in here, girls. Water, look at that. There it is. I didn't add this all up, but uh, we have no electricity bill, no gas bill or heating bill, no water bill. It's rural, so it's very cheap property tax. There's no mortgage, no rent. Uh, we produce a ton of our own food. I mean, add that all up. What's that worth? I think this place is paying us like $30,000 a year. Everyone needs a place to live anyways. Why not a place that pays you $30,000 a year? Hey, you know I am all dressed up. Because Dave is coming over? Nope, because we're going out for dinner. <laughs> oh, baby. Wow. I like it. I is this that homemade Shoshana cheese roll? Yeah. Is that the Gouda? Ooh, that is the Gouda. No way. How is it? Does it taste gouda-y? It tastes super gouda-y. It's very And there you go, that's yeah, our very, yeah. that's our own ham. Yes. And we grew those pineapples. <laughs> and these tomatoes. <laughs> you okay, not the pineapples, awesome. but the tomatoes. The tomatoes for the pizza sauce. The and the, those are amazing. Those are cowboy candies. Yes. Wow. It's just like old times, eh? Yeah. I don't remember sitting this close, actually. <laughs> you sat that close. It always, I, felt, I did. it always felt close to me. <laughs> Too close. The title of the video is, our off-grid homestead is paying big dividends. I said it was like a couple grand a month of savings. I even said it was 30 grand a month. Wow. That's 2,500. I mean, some people's rent Okay. Or mortgages or are twenty five hundred. The extreme. Uh... No, no, that's like most people I know. Thirty grand a month. No, a year. Oh, oh a year. Okay. Did I say a month? You said a month. A lot of people want to make money on their homestead, and I'm saying, forget it. Just save so much money 
on your homestead by your homestead like paying you dividends all the time that you just don't have to make that much money in the first place. Yeah. So you agree with me? Well, that yeah, that's why we that's why we moved here. What else do you want to tell everyone? Um, I love you all. Miss you all. I, that's what else can I, what else can you say? Wow. That wasn't me. <laughs>